what is going on welcome to the video so there is a video i've been wanting to do for a while now but i feel like i haven't had enough time logged uh to talk about that video and that video is how to select the right training shoes for you so i've been running for the past uh four and a half years now to say i've gone through my fair share amount of running shoes will you know be understatement i have gone through a lot of running shoes so i figure you know i think i'm due i've done my time <laughs> i have enough uh experience and expertise to be able to tell you what kind of shoes are the best running shoes for 2024 so since I started my running fitness journey, one of the biggest questions that I often get is what is the best running shoes? Can you recommend a repair running shoes? And also, how do you balance strength training? Well, those are the top two questions that I get. I've already done a video on how to balance strength training, but I'm, I figure it's time for me to cover the video on how to select the best training shoes for you. If you ask tons of people that run, if you are if you part of the running community, you see multitude of running shoes and you just don't know. It can be overwhelming sometimes in selecting which pair of shoe is right for you. But instead of telling you exactly this is the best pair of shoes and this one is better than the other i'm just going to give you like criteria like three criteria that i look for that i think you should be looking for when it comes to selecting the right pair of shoes for you um, before we get deep into the video we got a seven mile run vlog real quick at the time recording this video we are 20 days out from the ultra marathon that we are running behind the rock in mohawk utah 50 miles behind the rock in mohawk utah uh but we got it you know seven miles to log ease seven easy miles to log uh we did 30 miles last week a week a week ago the video should be out by now we did 10 miles yesterday uh, and we are doing seven miles so we can essentially at the back end of the training we're deloading right now so yeah i'm super excited that we got over the hump so to speak now we're just making sure we keep the body whole bodies you know together it's not falling apart being ready to perform when it comes to race time so let's go log some miles All right, so just finished the run uh, seven miles done in one hour two minutes and 49 seconds at a pace of 858 man that was a very 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 windy run um uh, supposed to be around about 30 35 miles per hour so uh but we got it done uh leg at this point of this race or training for this mar ultra marathon uh legs are just gonna be heavy all the time so the quicker you get used to it the quicker you get you get you stop complaining about it which i've been saying for a while but anyways you guys are not here to hear me complain you're here to figure out what kind, what's the best shoe to run in, in 2024 but if i get into what's the best running shoe for you in 2024 let me give you a quick history lesson on the shoes that i've worn in the past when i first started my running journey about three years ago the first pair of shoes that i ever wore was was the saucony endorphin speeds i'm not sure i'm not sure about you guys i started following nick bear years and years back and i saw nick bear wearing the endorphin speeds the look cool he's running fast of course let me buy some and let me run with it too it did it did do pretty well because i did use the shoe to train for my first ever um half marathon that i did with my wife four years ago and one thing that i noticed was um the for me somebody that has a white foot placement this right here has um a pretty narrow foot in for somebody that has a white feet for me so yes it did the job it got me through it but of course i'm always looking for better and after that the next pair of shoe that i copped was the hoka clifton eight for me hoka clifton eight is definitely a step up for me in terms of they're a little bit wider on my feet uh they have a little more cushion my weight being a 215 pound dude and it lasts long for a while but when i start getting to more of a you know I, i'm trying to train for a full marathon i thought i need something speedy but i went with the hoka bondi x's so this one right here has the carbon plate in it and sooner i realized i can only wear carbon plate shoes for anything under seven miles let me explain why so there's nothing wrong particularly with the bondi x's but it's more so more the carbon plate carbon plate for me the way i run it's not really the most beneficial uh shoe for me and again most of the time we choose choose to have carbon plate in them you're choosing the carbon plate because it can give you that extra little spring forward but well, being a 220 pound 215 pound dude there's not a lot of spring in that's going to give me and one thing i also found out was i'm having a lot of dorsiflexion when i'm running and anything more than anything more than seven miles my calves my achilles which is really really sore so for speed workouts anything on the six like anything on the six mile carbon plane for me is spot on but anything more than that no carbon plates for me at all towards the end of last year around september or so i had the opportunity to collab with new balance don't worry it's not an ad for new balance let's uh, collab with new balance and i got to run for the first time in the fresh form x more the v4 version and i have to say that's the shoe that i've been running with if you follow me on social media if you follow me on instagram on here that is my number one shoe 
that I've been running in just because one, in terms of comfort and being a bigger dude, and the cushioning factor, the fresh from technology was just what I need. Initially, I was very skeptical because I was like, huh, I'm not sure how this feature is gonna feel because I, from looks, it doesn't look like it has a wide foot, a white toe box, but I do not, I mean, I still feel like my feet can move around in them. Of course, sizing does matter because you have to go with the right size. So what I went with was the 12 and a half wide portion. So that's why the current shoe that I'm running in right now is gonna be, the current shoe I'm running right now is the version of the Fresh Form Exmoor V4, the trail version. That's what I'm gonna be doing or using for the uh, ultra marathon coming up. In. So that is all cool enough, but how do you figure out the best shoes for you? So the first thing I typically look for when, I, when, when I'm selecting shoes or you should be looking for is one, stability. What's the shoe that's gonna give you stability? If you don't know, most people, 99.99% of people, when you run, you are more, we tend to prone Meaning when you run, there's gonna be a slight collapse inward of your feet. So you wanna find shoes that's gonna give you as much stability as possible. They can keep your feet integrity when you're running. And the second thing I look for that you might be looking for is comfort, right? Like I said, the Fresh Form Exmoor V4 has cushioning that, so, that supports me, that's, that, feel it's be, uh, that feel it's able to absorb my weight anytime I'm running. Because I ran in some shoes in the past and the comfort is just not there. After a few miles running in them, it doesn't feel like that fresh pillow that your feet is just sinking it. The third and last thing that you should be looking for when you selected a pair of shoe is definitely wide, wide toe box. Their shoes right there, the Ultra brand, the Ultra line are great shoes because they typically are built with wider toe box. So if somebody that typically have a wide feet, a wider toe box, and you cannot find the right pair of shoes for you, Ultra brand is really great in terms of having a lot of variety when it comes to wider toe box. When I'm selling a pair of shoes, I'm definitely looking for a wide toe box to allow my feet to spread, which leads you having stronger feet and being a better runner. So instead of me saying, hey, Hey, this pair of shoes or this perfect this this pair of shoes this brand is the perfect type of shoe for you. Those are the three criteria that I typically look for that you should be looking for when it comes to selecting the right pair of shoes for you. But the last and the big advice I'm gonna give you is, instead of winging it or trying six, seven different pair of shoes, I encourage you to go to a running shoe store so they can do a proper analysis. Most shoe store, when you go into it, they ask you, okay, what, what's your goal? What are you trying to run for? Don't worry, it's not like going to GNC when you're trying to sell you on anything and everything. They ask you questions that are pertaining to your goal. Are you just a casual runner? How many miles are you trying to cover per week? And from there, they put you on a treadmill, a slow motion of your feet to see how well your pro, where your feet is pronated in. Are you pronated a lot or a little? What degree? What's your heel strike? Uh, do you need a minimal drop shoe? Uh, how big of a drop uh, shoe do you need? Your unique running style. And what they would do now is give you a selection of shoes. So it could be five, six different pair of shoes that fit within the range of what your goal is and that fit within the range of what your unique running style can fit. So then you can use the three strategies that I told you stability, comfort, preferably a white toe box, and preferably a parachute that doesn't restrict your, your toes or squeeze your toes together. And those are the those are the three criteria that I've that I've followed that have allowed me to use multiple brands, uh, multiple shoes for multiple brands, and I'm still able to use them on a consistent basis without any issues. That is the video for you guys. If you enjoyed the video, give this video a thumbs up. If you know a friend that's getting to running, I just need some education on how to select the right pair of shoes, feel free to share this video with them. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you give this video a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and turn the pro notification on so you can be notified anytime I drop a new video. That is it for me. This is Simon Kid Fit and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.